Defense, Braden. Thanks, guys. These two teams are coming off of an incredible 2021 campaign, but now it's all about making that leap forward to get into their to get into the gate. Coach Trivenoff says we are having a changing time after a 17-win season last season, and th this team this year is diverse, and it's not hopeful for them, but they hope to have the resources to win this season. As for Jacksonville State. The one thing they need to do this year is win the division and win a competitive A Sun this year, according to Coach Garvey, which he said today, right now, is about time for us to get some recognition here at Bloomington. Here, Blake and Hank, back to you. Jacksonville State leading one set to nil. Jackson State this year have nine new freshmen and some transfer students. But Coach Garvey emphasized to me that the upperclassmen have stepped up a lot, especially during the offseason. One girl that stood out, she had one kill today, and that was Elena Kinderman, who wowed the coaches at their first preseason game against UAB. But now it has to take more, Garvey said, for all the upperclassmen to step up and step in to leadership roles, which is a goal that he has this season. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kelsey. For this edition of Historic Hoosier, we will be profiling the playing career of former IU softball star Monica Armendis. Monica played for the Hoosiers softball team from 1995 to 1998. She cleaned up at the plate and ranks among the program's all-time leaders in career batting average, slugging percentage, RBIs, doubles, and home runs. To this day, she holds IU's single-season batting average record with a 4437. She earned second and third team All-America honors and first team All-Big Ten selections. She is the only softball player in Big Ten history to lead the conference in home runs multiple times in 1995 and 1997. After graduating from IU, Monica became the program's first ever professional player. She played for the Carolina Diamonds in the Women's Pro Pit Fast Pitch League, where she set the single season home run record, hitting 12 homers in 1999. In 2018, she was inducted into the IU Athletics Hall of Fame. That's a wrap for Ho Historic Hoosier. Josh and Kelsey, back to you. We have to all remember when Chloe Kelly's iconic goal at this year's Women's Euro Championship in July. And one thing that both Jemima Cookson, who comes from England, and Yip Van Wanderen, who from, who's from the Netherlands, would agree is that the uh, Kelly's goal helped bring the lasso to Ted Lasso in their quest, reminding them a piece bringing them a piece of Bloomington. The school's alumni is one of the top rugby high schools in the nation, and her UT16 matchups were also played in England. Yip Van Walderen from the Netherlands got her first start for the Hoosiers after playing club field hockey for a little bit. Then she was invited around her senior year at the Dutch U18 national team. On her Spotify playlist, which you can find if you search her name on Google, she's got an American flair, and she's also got some music from like Pitbull, Soldier by a talent, stuff like that. Both players are finding their way to make home here in America while also having a dominant game today. Back to you. Thank you guys so much. And this game won nothing so far. For many freshmen going into a story, it's about learning about yourself and then finding about your passion. For Longwood's Marissa Welkers and IU's Ann Melissic, who have both had good games so far, these two freshmen have already found their footing, with Coach Miranda Riggs saying, Welkers is a girl I love and someone who is great on the foreign line, but also the kind of girl that can score for us. And for Molesky, who won the Big Ten Freshman Player of the Year, had a stellar performance against Stanford, California, and UC Davis, and she has lifted into her starting role, but the big thing is both freshmen have continued to stay strong. Back to you guys, enjoy the game. It's Leverage, you had a great game out there today. Several goals throughout the contest. How do you, or several saves, how do you feel uh, going into this? Um, felt good today, you know, we had a bit of a tough game on Friday, um, but today was a bit of a boost of confidence just to get back in. I thought the team played really well and I'm glad to keep the clean sheet and hoping to roll on to next weekend feeling just as good. Uh, did you guys feel confident going into that one? I mean, how did you guys feel, especially when you were up 2-0? Um, yeah, we definitely felt confident. Um, I think fourth quarter we knew that we had to keep the energy up and keep it going, and we persisted and got the second goal. I think the team and the girls put up a really good fight. Um, 
we knew we couldn't underestimate this team. They played very well. So I think we played, yeah, we played very well against a good team. And uh, Longwood, they had a steep competition on defense. How do you think you guys did and what more would you improve on, especially next game? Um, I think we did quite well. There were definitely times we were a little frantic, but um, I think we put together a very solid defense. Um, and we're linking really well, so I think the girls put up a very good show today, and I'm very proud. All right, uh, thank you so much, and guys, back to you. It's good afternoon, friends, and welcome aboard. Alongside Braden Lentz, I'm Derek Decker. So glad you could join us. Great star here by the Raging Cajuns, of course. It's pretty, uh, that was a great home run over in the left center. Pretty dominant by this hitter. That's why I was so excited about her when she came up to the Scorcher wow. to the gap, going back wow. to the wall, and that's gone. Piscos gets into one for a two-run blast wow. in the fourth. They answer Indiana's pair in the third with two of their own. Two-out bomb for Sophie Piscos. Right in the left center, too. I mean, you could kiss that one goodbye as they're giving her the chain. Kind of like what Miami does with the soft liner to left. Minnick makes Ooh. the diving play. What a play by Taylor Minnick. The throw coming back to the infield. Now going to second. The throw is late. The throw to the plate, and they didn't get her. Wow. Boy, Lindsey Warwick is incensed. Wow. Crazy play. 6-2 in the third. Hallelujah. Another home run there. Great ball. Just left center. Smoked it. Smoked it out of here. Like ribeye ribs on a steak. I mean, my God. They knock off Indiana 11-2, Braden and what was a great performance from start to finish. Great performance by Louisiana, and you know, as the old saying says, that's all she wrote, especially after the fifth inning. Cajuns go to 32 and 10 on the year. They so a little bit lighter, sleep a little bit sounder. Enjoy the classic hits of the greatest radio sports calls in the history of radio sports in the United States. As we welcome you to the Super Bowl edition of the Retro Sports Hub on WBRA Radio, WBRA 98.1 FM. Today, we're going to take you back to last year's Super Bowl with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams, led by quarterback Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, also including Jamar Chase, the duo we mentioned earlier in these, one of these episodes about the LSU-Oklahoma game. Which, if you think about it now, Jalen Hooks was the quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners. If you'd like to listen to that, you can listen to that anywhere you get your podcast. Just search Retro Sports Hub or Corrigan Lentz at B R A Y D Y N Lentz L E N T S. But let's get to the action. It is Super Bowl 56. You are in Los Angeles, California. And you are listening to the game as you are driving along the city street trying to navigate your way through traffic just so you can get to the stadium. The Bengals are playing the Rams, and you are listening to Westwood One's coverage of the National Football League's Super Bowl edition. Live at the Blazer 91-1 Studios in Davis Hall at the campus of Vincent University, here is Wayne and Lentz with the report. Yes, that's correct. Vincennes University had an impressive showing here tonight with a 90-67 to victory over Indiana Elite, the little prep school outside of Indianapolis. VU at halftime was down 26-16 to as, of course, John, Coach John Franklin was ejected from the ball game in the ninth minute of play in the first half. But that didn't stop the VU Trailblazers from not only getting on a roll, but two players tonight not only showed that VU was on a roll, they were dominant the whole time too. As VU's John Yukamato scored 16 points, had two boards and one steal, and it's named as the Biggins Pizza Player of the Game. Make sure to go buy Biggins Pizza and use the promo code Vincent University in store pickup if you're picking up online and go to Biggins Pizza at BigginsPizza.com. Also tonight, Vincent University could also be thanked for players such as Brevin Jefferson, who not only scored a total of five points tonight, he scored little, but played at his absolute best. And what I mean by his absolute best was shown on the bench, as he was helping out his other assistant coaches, John Young and Greg Moore, as they were both almost clueless to even figure out what was going on in the second half. 
But then, as soon as he got on the bench, he was on a roll, trying to coach and not just coach, but also mentor his guys who were down 30 to 16 before the 15 minute mark of the second half. Now I'm going to send it over to Bernardo Malone, who is with the player of the game today, who was John Yukamato, who again scored 16 points, had two boards, and one steal. Beat Mineral Area Community College 77 to 64 last night. Wabash Valley College lost to Three Rivers College out of Missouri 62 to 53. And tomorrow night, as we also mentioned, East Mississippi College, they will be playing against the Hens Community College Trojans at 8 p.m. Tuned us tonight here on Alt 91 Vincent. We have an incredible showing of Vincent University basketball as they take on a high school team in Indiana Elite at 6.30 p.m. tonight here on Alt-91 and on Blazer 91.1 WVUB. Now you just saw Christopher Norris with the block there as the puck has just dropped. Here comes Norris on the attack near the blue line. He's going to now kick it back over to Theodore right near the circle. He's going to now penetrate it to the back, gives it over to Briscoe, back over to Norris. Norris is now giving it over to Suarez right past the blue line as it zips around the back of the goalie for the Jasper Wildcats. Now they have possession. Gives it back near to Aiden on the blue line and there is a foul on the play. And I believe that is on high sticking. And that's going to lead Christopher Duncan with his second penalty here tonight. Especially given the fact that coach Lonnie Moorhead has been preparing this team so far so well here tonight, getting his 3 0 advantage. Jasper on the blue line under the attack. Tries to get it underneath over to Suarez. Suarez underneath and kicks it inside over to Jarez. Who, Jarez, Daniel Jarez, a transfer student of Barif, gives it back now and past the blue line on the attack as it rolls around. He's rolling around the back of the iron. Vincent's Lincoln on the blue line. And he's going to swing it past there near the 25 feet mark. Shoot 10. Oh, saved. And that one saved by the goalie, Mark Andrews of Jasper. Vincent's Lincoln now has it. Here comes Duncan. Duncan gives it back over to Perez, who is also a new student. Gives it back now over to Norris again. The Norris brothers working two on two right now. They have the puck behind the net. And they're going to give it now back to Duncan once again. Line under the attack. He's going to give it over to Duncan. Duncan now driving it forward. Over to Suarez. He shoots and scores. Rodrigo Suarez with his fourth goal today. He's already surpassed the hat trick. And this guy has been on fire here tonight. Hasn't he, John? Just an unbelievable goal for nothing. The blue line crease gave it near the hash marks, near the circle, and he shoots a he scores for surprisingly his fourth goal tonight. Indiana, when they trailed at halftime, it came to the point where it now seems as if the Hoosiers are fighting back. 73-72, the Hoosiers have this one in the bag, and now it looks like Trax and Davis is going to come to the free throw line. And here comes DJ D now with the basketball. He's going to let right to left, pass the timeline, going to pass it back over to Leo on the right end. Bases loaded, nobody out, bottom of the sixth. He's going to swing, going to swing, high in the anchors, Town has done it again! The Hankers Town Little League, what more can they do? And there she is, there she goes, now the 30, the 20, the 35, the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown, and what a play! 